Recently, NASA launched a new space probe to Mars called the InSight Lander. It's going to land on the surface of Mars. It was launched in May 5th, and it's going to land towards the end of November. And it will allow us to do some cool stuff that we have never really done before. And I want to talk to you about some of its, what its design, what its goals are, and how this is unique. So, like many of the, the previous landers, most of the previous landers, has a pretty common design. It had a heat shield that you don't see depicted here that allowed it to survive the entry of the Martian atmosphere. It had some parachutes that were cut off that allowed it to slow itself down. And the final approach, or final landing, was done by rocket nozzle thrusters, like all Mars landers have done before. You could, in theory, do a landing with parachutes alone, but it would be pretty hard, and your parachutes would get tangled around the instruments, which you don't want. So they use parachutes to slow them most of the way down, and they cut them loose maybe a 1,000 feet or something like that above the, the ground and descend the last little bit with rocket power. InSight has a number of interesting missions. Some of the primary missions of InSight are... To these, these two instruments here that are placed on the surface. It's the first time that there's been deployable instruments like this. And you can see they have a tether to keep them tethered to the spacecraft to allow them to go forward. The one on the right is a seismometer that is known as the Seismic Experiment for Interior Structure. And what you actually see around this is just a, a shield to protect it from wind and, and whatever disturbances. It's actually placed on separately. First it places the instrument, and then it places the, the windshield across it. Presumably they were too much to carry at one load, and it would allow it to be a little bit more precise. So being on the surface of the planet, it would allow it to detect the seismic waves. What can you detect from seismic waves? Well, you can get a really good understanding of what's underneath the surface. It's by listening to the seismic waves that we are enabled to determine the composition of Earth. We know how thick the crust is. We know how thick the mantle is. We know about the core. We don't really know any of that information about Mars. So we've only done this seismic in instrumentation with two planetary bodies. We've also done it with the moon. The Apollo programs, a number of them, dropped off similar packages on the surface of the moon. The second unique instrument is this one. And this is actually going to drill into the surface of Mars. It will be the first time that anything nearly this deep has been done. It's not really going to do anything. This is called the Heat Flow and Physical Properties Package. What this is going to do is to determine how the heat flows through the surface. So it's basically a temperature probe that you're digging deeper underneath the surface. And you're trying to understand some of the, the just general characteristics of how the Martian soil works. This can dig up to 16 feet below the surface. Doesn't look like it's that much. That's actually quite significant. You know, we've done a few scoops of dirt from Mars before, but nothing anywhere near this level. So by doing this, you can kind of get, you're deep enough where you're not influenced as much by the Earth. Just like when you're in a cave, you have a constant temperature all year. Well, digging this deep, they can kind of get a, a sense of the innate properties of Mars. A couple of other instruments of note. One of them is the antenna that it will not only communicate back the data from Earth, but they're also going, like many other previous missions before, in particular the Viking programs and, and Pathfinder, they're able to precisely locate where inside is to within a few millimeters. And why is that important? Well, there's some small variations from time to time that you can tell a lot about an object. And with this, this extremely precise knowledge of where insight is, you can get some characteristics of the wobble of, of Mars. So, and other related characteristics, they, 
think they'll be able to detect even when Phobos goes across the, the planet, the tidal disturbances that are caused by that. So it's dual purpose instruments that NASA commonly does. And like pretty much every other lander on Mars, with the exception of the Mer rovers and I think the uh, Pathfinder rover, there's a weather package. So you can measure the wind and the atmospheric pressure and the temperature and that kind of data that can help you to better understand the Martian wind patterns. Lastly, there are a couple of cameras. One that is roughly here so you can see where you can actually deploy the instruments and the second one that is on this robotic arm. This robotic arm will actually manually deploy these two instruments at the location where they can be able to get the best data. And it also has a camera as you can kind of see right here. Other things to note, this looks a lot like the, the Phoenix Lander. And that's not by coincidence. This is built in part from scraps of the Phoenix Lander, which was in turn built from scraps of a previous lander. NASA tends to really recycle its technology. It has solar panels to keep everything powered. It has the rocket fuel tanks that are needed to do the descent. And you can see the rocket engines here. It has an uh, interesting thing. It has a laser, laser retrorefractor, which as far as I can tell is the first time that this has actually been sent to another planet. There's some of these that are on the moon from the Apollo missions again. With these, these laser rangefinders, we can determine exactly where the moon is to an accuracy of something very, very small. And we've actually been able to see that the moon is getting a little bit further away from us every year on the order of centimeters or something like that. Not very much. And it'd take a long time before anything happens. Well, we can get that kind of accuracy with, with uh, this lander too. Even after it's dead, you know, Apollo programs happened 60, 70 years ago and you could 60, 70, 40, almost 50 years ago. Wow. And, uh, yet we can still use those instruments even though they, cause they don't require any pass power. Well, you'd have to have an orbiter. You can't do that data from earth as far away as Mars is, but there have been lasers in, in Mars orbit before. And with this, you could get a, a calibrated distance that could be very useful for a lot of things. And so that's pretty much it. This is on its way to Mars now. It is expected to be there November 25th. Uh, there are a couple of interesting hitchhikers with this called the Marco CubeSats that will help to relay data when it's in entering inside the atmosphere of Mars. But otherwise, the Marco sats, they don't have any actual payload. They'll be the smallest spacecraft to travel independently to another uh, planet, which is pretty cool. There have been smaller spacecraft like uh, Philly, I think it was smaller, but it didn't travel independently. It was encompassed within a larger spacecraft, the Rosetta probe. Anyways, thanks much for joining me. Let me know what questions you guys have. And for now, keep on tracking. We will see you next time.